Welcome! It's Dr. Nesta from Finland again and welcome to my session called AAD Internals How did I build the ultimate Azure AD hacking tool from the scratch? So let's begin. First our sponsors, thanks for them for making this conference possible. And then to agenda. So I have a couple of things here tonight. So first I'm I'm going to introduce you the AAD internals, the ultimate hacking tool I created, and I will tell you why I did it. Then I'm going to show you some examples, so before that I'm just giving you a short introduction to Microsoft APIs. And then I have two examples for the uh, functions or commands from my module. Uh, one is for getting the actual locations of your, your um, Office 365 services, and then there's a function you can uh, use to change users' passwords. But let's start with introduction. So, <clears throat> so what is AAD internals? Well, first of all, it's a puzzle module, obviously, and there's a, well, yesterday I, I calculated and there was almost 25,000 lines of code, which I have typed which means that this is actually a script-only module. Well, mainly, there are some parts I couldn't do with the puzzle, so I had to use C Sharp or uh, C++ and a couple of DLLs, but, but mainly everything here is just pure PowerShell. And that's a good thing, because you can uh, take the code and embed it in your own scripts and use it that, that way. It's open source, so the source code is available in GitHub. I can show you show you that. Let's find my server. Yes. So if I go to GitHub, not the Mimikatz, but AAD internals. <clears throat> and here it is. So everything here you can use in your own script if you want to. And if you want to see something, let's say uh, Outlook API, everything is in here. So if there's something useful you see, you can just use it. And feel free to do so. That's why it's uh, done in the first place. Also, <clears throat> I have a blog site where I have um, all the uh, all the functions, for instance, how to use them, they are examples. So if I go back to my browser and go to o365plug.com slash AAD internals. And here are actually all the functions available. So, <coughs> excuse me, the reason, <coughs> the reason I'm not calling these commonlets is because these are scripts, so they are not created in, in, in C sharp or anything like that, so that's why they are called functions. It's not invented by me, but the guys who actually created this uh, language in the first place. So here are all the functions, and if I click something, let's say, what, what would be great, like this, if I want to set user's password, I just click there, and it jumps there, there is an example, how it should look like, and another example and so on. So everything is in there. So if you want to try to learn it, you can find it there. Okay. So why did I do this? Why did I, why have I spent a lot of time to reverse engineer micro things? Why, why have I spent so many hours writing this? And uh, here are a couple of reasons. Well, first of all, I have a uh, developer background. I've been working with software since 1980s, since the Commodore 64. So I have, I had skills to do that. Let's let's put it in that way. And also, I've been MCT or Microsoft Certified Trainer since 2014, and I have a, I, I've been training a lot of people. Let's say 500 or so in Finland uh, to Office 365 administration things and I've been keen to know how things work under the hood 
actually. So that's one thing why I spent so much time time to create this. Also, I always want to make people aware of information security issues which exist even in the cloud. And also, I wanted to share this knowledge with the community in an easy to use form. There are a lot of hacking tools. I know you, you can create things, you can do things, but they are typically some, let's say, Python code or something like that. It's very difficult for, for people to use. Well, if you are not used to do that, it's difficult. And I wanted to make this so as easy as possible. So as there was a couple of slides ago, where was it? Here. So if you want, you can actually install this powerful module using one simple command. So you just say install module, AAD internals, and that's it. And if you want to use the command, just type import module AAD internals, and that's it. All the comments are there, you can use them wherever you want. Yes. So, those were the reasons why I did the module, and then we are going to move forward towards the actual examples I have brought to you. And there's some war stories also I, I, I would like to share with you. So, first an introduction to Microsoft APIs. Yes. Now, when we are talking about Azure AD and Office 365, everything is in cloud. Okay. So even if you are using uh, Microsoft provided powerful modules to do things, you you are doing that in your local machine, but everything is in cloud. So actually, you are connecting the cloud somehow, and the way that how you do that is actually using REST APIs. And there are different APIs for different purposes, and different powerful modules are using different APIs, like for instance here, the old one, the one in the bottom, MS Online module is using what is called provisioning API. Like for instance, that common get MSOL user is using that API to connect to Azure AD. And the newer one, Azure AD, like get Azure AD user is using AAD or Azure AD graph API. And the authentication here is happening using OAuth, which means that you are dealing with access tokens, not with username and password. Well, of course, typically you will get the access token by using username and password, but these APIs, they are not using, using that authentication, only the access tokens. Okay, here are some API endpoints. So the older one, the MS Online module, is using provision API, and there's a URL for that. There's also a URL for Azure AD module, which is using Azure AD Graph. It's not the Microsoft Graph, the newer one. It's still using the old one, the Azure AD Graph. And then there's Azure AD Connect. When you when you use that to to synchronize your users from on-prem AD to uh, to Azure AD, it is using well, this is a name I'm using of it, Sync Provision Service. There's a URL for that. Yes. So when I started doing this module, I first decided that I well, I would like to let's say implement just for pra for the practice to implement some same functionality that's in MS Online module and. Um, and uh, I actually, I've been working with the with the web services earlier in my earlier positions quite a quite a lot. So I knew something from the past. So for instance, if I just copy and paste the URL of the API here and add the question mark and, and uh, the parameter WSDL or Whistle. It actually downloads the definition of the API. So basically, if you are, if you have some 
like Visual Studio, you could create kind of uh, code automatically. If you just give this URL, it should create the code automatically so that you should be able to use it. So these are just web services. And here is everything. I actually even write a code that read this, this like a uh, Vistel and then the other other settings from these like the, there's the type information and so on so it created the stubs stubs of the function for me automatically like for instance if I if I open this provision api.ps1 file there are things like this that auto generated on September 23rd 2018 which means that uh, this is auto generated based on that Vistel file but I haven't done any changes here so this is just basic basic thing and there's actually quite a lot of those functions that's never used so I could just get rid of them because for instance this particular file has what it is like uh, 6000 lines so there's uh, one quarter of, of the lines of the, of the whole module is, is there yes so when I got access to this still I could I could try I, I could start to create implement that functionality and one tool which I'm also using a lot because this is the HTTP traffic basically or HTTPS uh, I can use things like uh, uh, Fiddler. You could also use things like Burp Suite or something like that, but I, I personally like this a uh, little bit more. So what is this? What this is actually is the it's a proxy which ca which you can use to capture traffic, and if you configure it correctly, you can actually you can also intercept the HTTPS traffic, and you can see inside what is actually happening in there. Yes, so that was kind of the starting point I started to, to create this module. Okay, I'll just switch back to the presentation. I can find it somewhere. Yes. <clears throat> so then a couple of examples of the module. So first one is the function I created. Um, I think this was one of the first once I created, it's called get AAD in service locations, and what it, it what what it does is that it it lists the actual locations of your your own services. Uh, so even though whatever Microsoft tells you, they are not always correct. They they might not be there where you think they are. Anyway. The starting point for this was this command from the Microsoft own uh, admin module called get MSOL company information, which lists these things here. And uh, it actually shows only subset of the information here. So there's a lot of other things in the back that's not shown to you. Okay. So, luckily, this API is using uh, just so called plain text XML, so it's quite easy to uh, read. So, it's in human readable form. And here's an example of, of, the, of the file containing all the, all the attributes of, of your current tenant, what the com get company information returns. But if you compare it to the previous one, there's there's lot for information out there. And here's one interesting uh, piece of information, which is called service instance information. And when you expand that one, it shows you actually the <coughs> excuse me what service and where it is located. Like here, that's Windows slash STF. I don't know what that means. But the region is North America and the country is United States. So you can actually have a very specific kind of uh, information where your service is 
his services are. So I'm, I'm going to show you how this actually works. So <clears throat> first I'm going to import the module. like this. Okay, and I actually was already, I had already imported that. But <clears throat> now because we are using those access tokens, the first thing I want to do is to get a access token. So I'm going to use my personal uh, regular user account to connect to my own, own tenant. So, can, so that I can also show you that you can do this as a user. You don't have to be admin. You don't have any. You don't require any admin rights to do this. So first, there's a variable, and I said that get AAD access token for AAD graph. Like this, and if I if I would had previously, let's say, saved your credentials as PS credentials to let's say some variable, I could use them. Or if you have a working SAML token, you could, you could use that. Or if you have a Kerberos ticket, you could, you could use that. But I'm not giving anything, and when I hit enter, it actually pops out the window, and I just need to log in. And sorry about that, this is in Finnish, but uh, I think you know the information you have to type in here. And I, of course, have an MFA, so I need to accept this with my mobile phone. And there we are. And there's a, a function you can use to show what's inside that access token. It's called read AAD int uh, access token. I just give that as a parameter and hit enter. Now you can see that it's uh, me, Nestori, .com. Okay, so now if I type here get AAD int uh, int service locations, right, and give the access token, and I say, say also that form table. So it's a little bit prettier. So now, as I told you, I I'm located in Finland. But if you look at the list here, for instance, there's a directory to Cosmos. I don't know what's that. I think it's kind of somehow related to Delve. I'm not sure, but it's located in Ukraine. Then I have some things here in North America. I don't know what these are. Exchange Online Protection, that's in, in uh, Netherlands, that's that's okay. Microsoft Office, if I remember correctly, this is the service you use to activate your office every now and then, so it's in, in US. What else here? Oh, this is actually funny. Uh, the IE stands for Ireland, and IR stands for Iran. So I think that's a typo typo there. But as you can see, there are more services outside the EU than in EU. So, for instance, Kaisala, which is uh, kind of uh, competitive to WhatsApp, that's in US. So, anyway, as, as long as you know what you are doing and where these are, that's a good thing. Yes, but that's uh, one thing that with, when you create your own module and you use those commands, same commands that, that the actual admin tools are using, you can access information that's not available otherwise. So you can show this kind of information, what is there, but because you, if you are using only the, the uh, Microsoft provided tools, you can't see them. Yes, so that was the first example. And then to another one, which is a, a set AAD into user password. Now, uh, this is not using that that same API, that provision API, but this is using the own 
own API. Uh, there's also methods that you can change password there. Like I said, MS only use a password. There's a functionality for that, but there's something uh, some things you can do with this that you can do with that. Okay. So as already connect is the let's say a tool or appliance, piece of software that is synchronizing your identities from your on-prem to to cloud and uh, if you have configured it in that way it can also synchronize your password hashes from the AD to Azure AD which means that you can use your username and password also in, in cloud and if you are not using uh, the password hash synchronization you can turn it on because this it, it, this function requires that it, it is turned on you can turn it on it's it's just a switch in azure ad which says that okay now the the um, azure ad connect can synchronize passwords or that it allows you to do the to uh, it allows you to use this function okay well one bad thing here is that it's not using plain text xml but it's using binary XML, which is uh, very terrible. But it, it was not easy to read that that information because it's in uh, bytecode. But luckily, there was a, a binary message inspector for for Fiddler created by Will uh, Fuga, and here are some examples of that. So this is an example of the communication of Azure AD Connect and, and the uh, Azure AD. So as you can see, the content type is application slash SOAP MS, MS bin 1. And that is actual binary code. And here's an example of what these different things means. For instance, O2 means in this context that the envelope tag is starting, starting, and OB means that the header tag is starting. And after I installed the inspector module, it's it's it looked like this. And uh, there's a, I have also implemented this same. Well, basically, I ported the same code. Uh, this is based on to to uh, Azure AD, Azure AD internals. So, basically, it's based on dictionaries. So, whenever you are giving it an XML file and that dictionary, it can uh, it can change that to binary uh, binary XML and vice versa. So. When I was reading this, I created the uh, I, I uh, created the same kind of response or or the request and same kind as it, it showed here. And when I, but when I sent it, it always sent me back an error. And I was like, why is this like this? And uh, I was banging my head to wall like a couple of months. I don't know what happened. Uh, and then for some reason I, I started to think that there has to be something wrong and this is from the source code of that that inspector and as you can see this from these are actually from definition of this um, uh, language so to speak this binary xml uh, language and you add these strings to to that dictionary in a certain order so that it can work with the documents and i read the this is from the actual definition document and as you, and if you notice there's a slight difference here and that's there there's a value called digest value and it's missing from this this uh, uh, inspector source code so I went to GitHub and, and I added there, as you can see, I submitted a one one change so that that I added that missing value there. 
and it only took like a couple of hours and the guy actually fixed that. So big hand for him. And after that everything got got, got to working. So as you can see from the top left corner there's a tag that says sequence acknowledgement. It should have been actually replied to. Whereas in the top on the top left the reply to is only the next one, uh, only at the next one. So, so after I fix this one, I could create same kind of uh, a request, and everything started working. And and after that, I could do very uh, funny things. And when I was, uh, let's say, spying, or that way they connect us. Here's a one, one let's say capture from the communication and uh, let's see if I can need to do just a minute my zoom it was not running yes so in header here it's it's not uh, expanded uh, there's a the in that header you send uh, certain information about about you for instance that access token and in order to operate this you have you have to have either global admin rights or you have to have a direct synchronization account rights which that as already connect actually has in, uh, to cloud yes but i'm not showing it to you so so you just have to believe that that's there. But what I find here is that here's this credential data. So that is actually sent to Azure AD from the on-prem. And uh, the, that hash is uh, pbkdf2 or password based key derivation function 2 kind of a hash. And uh, only this hash is synchronized. So this means that as already doesn't know what how long password that is so how complex that it is and so on which means that those class uh, sorry those cloud password restrictions do not apply so when i first discovered this those restrictions was that you have to have well certain complexity and the length had to be from 8 to 16 characters and that's it currently you can actually use 256 character long password password passwords but but from technical point of view it really doesn't matter yes so i i learned how to create this well let's see what other information here is well these are always same these values here so they don't change but then we have a uh, a salt. We also have okay, wrong button. The number of uh, iterations you run this, and then we have the actual actual hash here, right here at the end. Okay, and if you know how how to do this, you can you can implement this functionality by yourself which I have done. Another piece of information here you need is the source anchor which is uh, actually saved in Azure ID in every user who is synchronized has this attribute but it's called immutable ID but the content is saved so it anchors this cloud user to your on-prem on ID and technically this is just base 64 encoded GUID of that user in your on-prem, on-prem AD. Also some interesting information here is the change date. Okay, so you can say when this has changed, when this password has changed. Yes, so which means that you can actually change this password like 100 years ago. So that's possible. So if you are a hacker, for instance, 
and you well using some methods you get access to credentials who can use this api you could set users passwords to be resetted at past and so on so you can use that kind of to cover your cover your tracks so let's let's see how this works okay now let's see if i have any i i don't so i just save admin credentials to a variable so i'm an admin like this and then i get the access token is add me so it's easy to remember and then I just give the credential here yes <clears throat> so now I am an admin user let's say that I create a new user I like to use the older module anyway because that's how I first learned to operate as a AD with PowerZone so I just a new MSL user, user principal name, someone at blackcat.my0365.sign. And I have to give the display name also. Like that. And now it creates a user. Oh, there was already someone. Let's say someone two. <laughs> okay, uh, I think I've used this some some point. Of, let's say nine. I don't think there's a someone nine there. Shouldn't be. Yes, now that's much better. Okay, and here's the user's password, right? and now what i need i need that immutable id of that user well actually that particular user doesn't have any immutable id in the cloud because it's not synced from your on-prem that's okay i can always set that so let's put it in this way it's just for demonstration purposes and i'm gonna take give the say ps kind of dot eu so that can be immutable ID okay so now I can say set AAD in user password I give the access token here then I'm gonna say what's the source anchor and that was the psconf.du and then the actual password let's say a so one character long password and then I'm gonna say change date and just to demonstrate shortly I want to say get date and add years minus 30 and that should do it oh I used the wrong access token, so that's a good demonstration that, that you need to have admin to do this. So that's the actual admin token. Yes, and now because the result is zero, everything worked as it should. So now if I take get MSL user and that's the user principal name yes and format list and I want to take last so now we can see that the last password chain change time step is from 1990 great so now let's see if the user can actually log in so I go to portal office.com And use another user, someone 
and we hit A and sign in. Okay. And this can actually take some time, so it's not that quick. Especially because now this tenant I'm using is in US and I'm, I'm in Europe, so it might take some time, but we're not going to quit until it works. Well, there's one sentence which is possible that, that uh, might, might have changed something. We don't know. But if they haven't checked that complexity of password privately, not in the right side, we'll see. Not yet. But go for it. I'll 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 go for it. Now, it worked, yes, so it just took a couple of minutes, but anyway, if you are a hacker, and if you get access to those credentials, you can, you can access that API, you can do these kind of things. Yes, okay, so that was it from, from this session. Yes. And just to sum up, so first of all, if you know something, if you are skillful in something, you have some inside knowledge from how something works, please share that. And Publisher Module is very easy and great way to share that knowledge to everybody, to the community. But the challenge is that that cloud changes all the time. So I have some functionality that's based, for instance, on uh, on the actual graphical GUI, well, not graphical, to websites. For instance, if you want to log in to using to some certain service, you need to emulate pressing some buttons. And when they change that every now and then, then the module will break. So that's a challenge, but these APIs should be more stable. So so they are not changing all the time because there are a lot of things people using there uh, all, all, all around the world this service so they, those APIs just can't be changed like like that yes and here's some information about me so if you want to contact me or listen to what I have to say please go to my blog or you can follow me on Twitter there's my handle just Nestor Sunima, not very innovative, but easy to remember. Yes, and don't forget to attend the next conference in, in 2021 in Hanover, Germany, in June 2021. Okay, thank you very much.